We've been talking about your, your characteristics of a uh, puncture scheme on three points. That's welcome. Thank you very much for being this clear. Um, <coughs> this is John Borbis and I'm on thank you. And we work over the field of complex numbers. Um, <coughs> that takes me to schemes over C to sets that sends B scheme B to a set of B flat portions of F and so we back up F <coughs> with Hilbert polynomial. So more generally, I mean, it goes into the proof of the main theorem, and to state the case that, uh, so, and more generally, <clears throat> when x is of the form, say, origin of some uh, <coughs> C algebra, any C algebra, and uh, it can even be quasi -quasi. by the work of many people, but to, to name one paper, stop and Kielis. Okay, so um, from now on, <clears throat> So 
if the homological dimension is, uh, is zero, then f itself is locally true. But in general, so the derived ball of f is given by these two term complex. So h zero of f, h zero of this complex is uh, so called good of f, and uh, h one is. Satisfies the, uh, the cell condition S2. Uh, so it is also self dual, the double dual of F is F itself. The second case, so I'm still assuming that, yeah, so I'm only assuming that the homological dimension of F is less than or If F is torsion free, Then uh, dimension of this sheaf uh, x one of the pool is less than or equal to one. <coughs> so this sheaf is supported on the uh, on the singularity. The locus that uh, f is not uh, local. But then if, uh, so if, uh, so in this case, an interesting, interesting example of this is the case of reflexive sheet. So F is reflexive. If and only if uh, dimension of. That is to use a model that you to add to the dimensions to add to what you want to use. Can you ask what's the difference between Jack and Star? Yeah, so this is uh, just the uh, form of F and O, but that one is the derived. So we take the uh, local free resolution and go that. So it's the dual, dual of this uh, complex. But this one is form of So this is the sheaf. So, uh, so then in this case, the dimension of uh, this sheaf is zero. And uh, Reflexive means that um, F is this double. So this means that the particular singular uh, set of F is zero dimension. And uh, so and F satisfies. So if F is reflexive, then it's equivalent to F satisfies any cell conditions. <coughs> So now I'm ready to write on the manicure. <coughs> so, yeah, so uh, X is a non singular uh, quasi projective three fold, and the homological dimension of F is less than or equal to one. And suppose that we are in one of these situations, so either F is torsion or F is torsion.
Then uh, we prove that the generating function of the Euler characteristic of the uh, scheme zero dimensional portions of F, at least such F, of length and so the, the generating function of this. So we divide it by the Machmann function to the power of R times the polar characteristic of X. This is the same as the generating function of of this one-dimensional shift or two-dimensional shift depending on the situation we are <coughs> So this is the main theorem of the stuff where R is the rank of F. So if it is zero, then uh, so we need that the distortion, then we don't have the denominator. So R is rank of F. Uh, M is the Mach 1 function. And E is the topological order of characteristic. Theorem has been also proven by a uh, different method by BTS and Ricotti uh, in the case that X is a projective variety and F is torsion free homological dimensionless than Ricotti one, but uh, also new state But their method is different, uh, so they use the uh, uh, and Toda method applied to the modular space of highly blank PT uh, pair uh, constructed by Jason Rowe. <coughs> So, what I'm going to do is to first uh, specialize to the case that rank equal to one and see what this theorem gives us and then uh, look at a few applications and if we have time then talk about the sketch of the proof. <coughs> Ideal shape of a cone metallic curve cancelled by a line. So, of the twist by a line bundle. So, the line bundle is not very important because uh, both sides of this theorem is uh, insensitive. But if we replace F by uh, F tensor, some line bundle, because we are looking at zero dimensional quotient. I ignore this this twist, twist by a line bundle. Uh, so up to twist by a line bundle, F is the ideal shift. Uh, uh, where C is a common quality. 
So in this case, then, so this x1 fo, which is x1 ic always, becomes isomorphic to isomorphic to x2 of uh, OCN. Pure one dimension option. So when f is ic and x1 of i and c, which we knew that it was a one dimensional shift, but it is not uh, it is not pure in general. But in this case, it becomes pure. So do what I see. Do what I see in zero dimensional quotient. So any element of, uh, yeah, so any element of uh, that appears in this the scheme is of form the zero dimensional quotient of so under this identification. <coughs> Are you assuming something about H one of X vanishing, H one of O of X vanishing or something? H one of O. No. No? No. Uh, no. For this for this isomorphism? Yeah. And it just follows from the short exact sequence because uh, for the uh, <coughs> So the, uh, the term before x1 ICO is x1 OO, so you don't assume that is zero? You don't assume. No, we don't need Zero-dimensional quotient of of this form gives a gives a DT pair. These are sheaf x's, right? These are not global x's. Yeah, these are sheaf, they are one dimensional sheaf. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> This again, we get OC back. So, so I'm dualizing this short exact sequence, so we get the short exact sequence of this one. So now uh, Q is X3 Q O, so this K is X2. So these are the only non vanishing uh, X groups. So we get the PT pair in here appearing here. So, <coughs> so then this means that, so using this idea, so uh, we can interpret this, uh, this this main theorem. So in case that rank is one, so theorem.
what this characteristic of PT. So this is the main theorem in this case. So this is the so ICN is the locus of I forgot. So the code, the code scheme that you're looking at is not a smooth flow. It's not a smooth flow. No. Then what do you mean by all the characters? It's just complex. Yeah. It's, just it's the weighted one? It's just topological. It's the topological, topological, topological characters. Yeah, it's a topological space. Okay. So, so nothing, none of these things are there. Yeah, so in uh, DD theory, we take the weighted order. But this is the right, honest so thing. Right, so the way function is one, right? So this is the right. okay, So these are non, not deformation invariants. No, these are not deformation <coughs> So, so locus of N MNOP modulate space of one dimensional. Uh, yeah, so this is the left hand side, and the right hand side is the uh, <coughs> stable thermodynamic space. is basically the Euler characteristic version of MNOPPT corresponding. So this is the Euler characteristic versus the weighted Euler characteristic version of MNOPPT correspondence. And then they integrate this relation uh, over the space of or the Gilbert scheme of coin Okay, so So now I want to talk about a few applications to the modular space of uh, Stable sheets, torsion free sheets on three. So, first application is application. Yeah, so this, because of this discussion, so this can be viewed as a higher rank version of the MNOPPT correspondence. And this is basically, uh, yeah, so <coughs> this is more clear in the proof of inches and we call it the dimension in this theorem because we directly use the modular space of uh, higher rank state. Okay, applications. 
So f is so uh, assume that in this uh, in this theorem f is reflexive. Remember that f uh, f is torsion free and homological dimension one doesn't require f to be ref reflexive. But if we assume that f is reflexive. Okay, so then the right hand side of the theorem. So in this case, so remember that when f is reflexive, then this is zero dimensional. So that's why in fact we get a polynomial this the right hand side of theorem is a polynomial denoted by Q. So polynomial is obvious because we know that this is zero dimensional. So the degree of this polynomial is the length of this uh, sheet, right? So of uh, the uh, e equal to the length of x1. So what we show what is interesting is some sort of the duality. So satisfying. So the dual of a uh, reflexive sheet is again reflexive. So these two polynomials are related. In fact, they are So the case r equal to 2 is, uh, is a special. So when r is equal to 2, then, uh, then this polynomial is in fact uh, polyndrome. So p. Is, which means that I e and q to the power of e times p of q is uh, or p of q inverse. So if you replace q by q inverse in this polynomial, so we get. Uh, These are easy applications of, uh, of this theorem. So basically, it follows from a few, a few observations that, so first, as I said, uh, this one is zero. This gives polynomiality. And also, this is also easy. Zero dimensional sheet is exactly x one of the star. And uh, <clears throat> and this implies that so from this we prove that we can prove easily that we put the scheme of uh, x one f o
proves that x is a positive liberating distribution. And that uh, m r c1, c2, c3 in the modular space of slope stable. On X we change classes. CI. So inside this modular space we consider an open locus denoted by M0. of <coughs> stable sheaves. So this open subset could be empty. Uh, similarity is zero damage. So in general, Singularity of a, a torsion free sheet can be one dimension, but uh, inside there is an open dense of could be empty of those uh, stable sheets whose singularity is zero. So you this by two zero. Define <coughs> PRC1, C2, Q to be, again, some over. So we keep fix R C1, C2, and then we sum over all, all the C3s, all the third gen classes, Q to the power of C3, divided by the same power of Mach 1. Mach 1, so we replace Q by Q to minus 2, R the order characteristic of X. So the reason for this change is that over there we are looking at, at the length of sheaves in here, you're looking at the third chain class, so they are related, but uh, that's, that's just for this, uh, to make adjustment for uh, this normalization. <coughs> okay, so then we prove that, so using main theorem, so as an application of the main theorem, we show that then uh, P power C1, C2, of Q is a Lauren polynomial satisfying P R C one C two. So if you replace Q by Q inverse in here we get P R minus C one. So this is for general rank R. Again, for R equal to two, we have uh, we have we, we can we can say more. And R is equal to two. In fact, uh, we have seen P R C one C two Q inverse same as P R. is the idea of showing that this is a Lorentz polynomial. So it's an application of the main theorem and application one. Uh, so the idea of this one is that embed, so any torsion proof sheet can be embedded into its reflexive ball and embed any torsion proof sheet G into its Reflexive hall, then integrate the relations that we got in application one over the modular space of uh, stable reflexive Then integrate uh, application one over the modular space of. Similar to the proof of uh, Stoffel Thomas proof, so over the 
that they, they integrate over the uh, space of Cohen Macaulay curve. And here we, uh, we, we, we integrate over the space of um, stable reflexes. A remark here that uh, for a fixed R and C one. A stable rank R uh, torsion free shift, uh, stable torsion free shift with, with, uh, with rank R and first uh, plus C1. For which there exists a rank R stable torsion free shift on X. So, this such a minimal C2 always exists because of the uh, so what happens in the minimal C2 case is that this M0 becomes the full particle space. So for example, if X is P3, R is two, and C one C one is the hyperplane class. And C two is the class of line. <clears throat> so this, this C two is minimal, and in this case, P two C one C two Q is four Q plus four Q. So this is the Lorentz polynomial. So and this is the full modular space of rank to stable sheets with this chain class two. So just to understand your proof better, when you have torsion free sheets here, you embed them in the reflexive hall. Yeah, which is reflexive. Sure. Yeah. So you can use application one. Yes. But then the, what does that tell you about G itself? And so we integrate over this. Okay. So, and then we have these relations, and then when you integrate them, uh, <clears throat> so, so we have this double dual map, which is a constructible morphism from the modular space of, so from this modular space, from M. No. So, I mean, of course, we have to take you know, more different C3 to the, to the modular, the modular of space of reflexities, and then the fibers are called the schemes. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. Even by so the then, then you go over this quotient thing. of induced by the term. Sure. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so we need another. Uh, yeah, so we need another ingredient. So again, some simple optimization also for so for having this. So. Integrate over the modular space as a stable reflexive sheet, and also we so make a key point. And here is that uh, C three of G, the reflexive hole is bounded. It's bounded. So this is another lemma that we put. Uh, it's bounded when R C one C two are fixed. So, yeah. so when I mean so for the modular space of uh, torsion free sheets, we let C three to be arbitrary. But uh, since R C one C two are fixed, mm -hmm. so this G double S R is uh, also automatically stable, and uh, and, uh, and and the C three is bound. So that's why we get this Lorentz polynomial rather than having the. Uh, C 
series. So maybe I mentioned quickly another tradition from the time that book. Can I ask you another thing? So when you have this map induced by the double dual mm -hmm. and the fibers are cut skin, but these fibers kind of jump, right? Yeah, that's why you say it's a constructible mode. So if you have a flat family of ocean species, the double dual uh, will doesn't remain flat. We are taking older characteristics, so we go to the stratification map. Oh. So, so we go to the stratifications that uh, basically this, the job doesn't occur. I see. So another application is, uh, is in progress. And uh, it's about the rationality. So basically, we want to see what happens if we don't look at this locus, but we look at uh, full modulated space, the general picture. Yes. <coughs> so the motivation is that, and Bridgeland told us, They proved the PT correspondence, I mean, both for older characteristics and naked older characteristics, and for rank one and also for higher rank. So, rank one was proven by total British land, and the higher rank was later proven by total. <coughs> so, they show that, uh, uh, so they proved this correspondence. So, as a, as a result, so if uh, x is a Columbia of threefold, then again sum over E and R C one C C three divided by Mach one is the Doran expansion of a rational function. So, so the, this rationality was important in rank one. Uh, I mean, yeah, so when they, uh, of course, for the weighted order characteristic version, then they talk about the PT, the Gromopitan correspondence, the PTGW correspondence. So this rationality was important to make sense of the conjecture. <coughs> This rationality holds for any projective uh, tree rather than the So the idea of proof is that again we want to use this main theorem. <coughs> of, again, Grishland and Toda on the non quality of case. So step two is to uh, stratify M according to uh, So in here, we embed any torsion free sheet between <coughs> reflexive hall, which is standard. In here, we show a a little demo that any uh, torsion free shift can be embedded into a torsion free shift uh, of homological dimension less than or equal to homological <coughs> one less than to one half to fix. Oh, so 
so in other words, uh, so there exists, so given G as over there, there exists a unique uh, homological dimension less than one F such that G can be embedded into F and F is embedded into uh, the double dual of G. So the problem was that in general, if we don't go to this open locus, this quotient is can be one dimension. But we choose this F to be homological dimension one, but the good thing is that uh, the quotient will be zero dimension. <laughs> then, uh, so, then we start integrating over the modular space of a stable sheet. So we do the same thing, but now we integrate over the modular space of uh, homological dimension one. So we use the rationality in step one to prove that. Uh, this thing is rational for any project. So, as a corollary of this approach, we always show that <clears throat> if T is a one dimensional. How do you, like, it's a naive question, how do you, how do you make sure such F exists? This is, this is a demo that we algebra of that dimension, so then if I remember that it is related to the proof of this number. So let me just uh, quickly say something about this. Um, so this uh, <coughs> very And uh, so, so C is a reduced case. This rationality also appeared in the work of uh, Malik Yun for planar curves, and also in the work of Rini and Shen. So these are for planar. So the idea of, of this corollary is that, so the idea here is that uh, any one dimensional shift uh, there exists, so show that for any uh, one dimensional shift D on X, there exists a torsion free shift F of homological dimension one. One such that T is uh, isomorphic to 
paste the one. Out. <coughs> F and O. So any arbitrary one dimensional shift can be realized this way. Then we use the Okay, so now I think I have more than five minutes, so let's uh, let's say something about the idea of the main theorem. Can I ask? So uh, in the Vivek and the Davish's result, this curve is fixed, right? Yes. But in, in your case, your curve is not fixed. Your loop is, is fixed. So I'm saying that, uh, so these two are related because in here T was a fixed one dimensional shift. So I'm saying ah, that if you take T to one be OC, uh -huh. then yeah, yeah, yeah. this gives You're this. Right. I'm sorry. So the code scheme becomes uh, just a different scheme. So that's I just wanted to. <coughs> So step one, uh, prove main theorem. When f is locally So if, when f is locally so of course I'm in here I'm sketching the proof when f is torsion free. So when f is torsion is really the proof is much simpler because you can use the duality. Because as I said in that in that case f is uh, two-dimensional and satisfies us too, and then you can use its uh, self-duality proof, and we have nothing in the denominator. So, yeah, so this is the sketch of proof for the torsion-free case. So when f is locally free, the proof is, uh, <coughs> so in this case, uh, so we just want to show that uh, we get, uh, so the, this series is just present. This, this one is just one, so this is trivial because we have no similarity. So this is just Mach 1 to the power of the whole R times all So this is standard. <coughs> so by the certification or the, the symmetric product, I'm looking at the fibers of the pumps and then reduce it to the case of the pump for for which we know that the answer is the Mach 1. Um, <coughs> so step two, uh, to reduce to the affine case. I, uh, I will shortly say why we reduce to the affine case. So where A is either finitely generated regular C object of dimension three. Or A is the completion of a regular local thing. Finally generated local range of the Okay, so why we need to reduce to the fine case? Is the proof that we gave is that we use this algebra result from Bourbaki. Step three uh, construct maxillary curve. <clears throat> uh, so, in here, in this theorem, we don't have any. Curve, except that this is one dimensional. Um, this shape is one dimensional, but we don't have a uh, nice curve to work with. <coughs> Particularly nice curve to work with. So this result says that uh, if M is a torsion free A model. A can be one of these things. So this this result is more general. So I mean, A can be uh, Noetherian and 
uh, integrally closed. So this is the, the, the requirement of Kurban. Yeah. Of rank, of rank R, sorry. Then there exists a homomorphism. Okay, so to apply to our, you know, to our case, so in our case, so n is has homological dimension one. So if uh, so, before people get going to that, so let i be the image of f. So they're still in the general case. So when i is the image of f, then basically i is an ideal in a. So we get this short exact sequence. So now if the homological dimension of M is 1, then I is of the form where S is it's an effective device, and C is So this is our auxiliary curve running out of time. <clears throat> so then maybe I can say quickly that uh, we realize this code scheme in this local, local case. So this code scheme is realized as a sub locus of a modular space of uh, PT pairs again supported on these curves. And, uh, and then we, we, we do a uh, uh, step four uh, higher rank, higher rank version of stuff for Thomas and Hall algebra. So the proof that they gave in rank one then can be applied in this local and then some adjustment to, to accommodate the higher ranks. So do you think there's a, that you can generalize this to the growth indicator? Uh, no, I think uh, so. Yeah, it's, so for this all algebra calculation, so we thought about it. So I mean, so at some point you really need to do a specialization to get the nice formula. So at some step forward, but if you want to uh, make it a make it a nice formula, yeah. So we we do need to specialize the older calculations. Another question? Okay. Oh, I have another question. So uh, how about uh, an orbifold version of the X was a, had some stabilizers, and then you took a generating series with some equivariant parameters too. Uh, no, we haven't thought about it, so maybe it mean, could be some. Yeah. yeah, but we haven't thought about it. It's probably some part of it. I'm sure most of it. Not like sense, and again. Uh, the next talk will be uh, 4.30. <laughs>